Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of your Wheel and Anchor weekly newsletter. This week, I'm delighted to be coming to you from another of our Wheel and Anchor destinations. I'm here in Helsinki, specifically on the fortress island of Suomenlinna, which is just off the coast. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site that saw all kinds of battles and changes of control over the centuries since it was built. The theme for this week's newsletter is all about the summer of chaos. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I'm generally somebody that's an optimist, as you well know, particularly if you've been following me over the last couple of years through the pandemic. But I thought it was a good time to address what's happening out there in the travel industry, specifically with regards to airlines. And I think we've all been reading the headlines about what's going on, chaos at airports, chaos with flight cancellations, delays, baggage being lost. Uh, and this is a truly a worldwide phenomenon, but it's not just uh, been happening in um, in certainly in North America, but throughout Europe as well. Asia, from what I've heard, has been a little bit less affected, uh, but nevertheless, it is a global situation. And so between, uh, you know, airlines, uh, you know, filing for bankruptcy, uh, like um, Scandinavian Airlines did earlier this week on top of a, uh, on top of a cr crew strike, um, uh, as well as, of course, the capacity issues. And that's what really underlies it all, uh, is the fact that uh, the demand for travel this summer so quickly after we've emerged out of the pandemic, it frankly caught the airlines by surprise. Uh, and listen, I'm the first one, and I tend to be very critical of airlines, particularly our domestic ones at home in Canada. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I think that uh, we have to play a little bit of devil's advocate and understand exactly what's gone down. Uh, you know, as I've said in previous newsletters, and as I think is generally general knowledge about the travel in industry is, is that there was a mass accident, exodus, a layoff of people uh, during the pandemic, of course, when the tourism industry absolutely collapsed. Uh, and the fact that it's rebounded so quickly has caught people off guard. Um, there's a number of other factors at play here. Of course, energy prices are, are having an impact on things as well. And so what does it mean for you to travel? Well, if, you've, if you've already booked uh, plans to travel this summer, um, you can expect that uh, you can expect the worst and hopefully you'll have a better situation than that. I've certainly heard from lots of people who've, you know, flown from airports in Canada and have not had any problems and said, what's the big deal? I don't understand. At the same time, uh, many of our members have been affected by uh, some, of the, some of the challenges having had flights canceled and rerouted and massive delays. So we've seen all sides of the spectrum. Um, myself, uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but a, a European carrier lost my luggage. I chased it literally around Europe for three weeks, finally picking it up on the other side of the continent. Uh, and uh, amongst hundreds and thousands of bags that were in the airport where I finally retrieved my luggage from. So um, I think we've, those of us that have been traveling uh, have seen the impact of what's going on. And so, uh, as I say, if you are planning travel, if you've already booked something, um, then I think the message here is patience, um, expect the worst, be prepared, uh, make sure you take all of your valuables, uh, medications in your hand luggage, um, anything that you can't live without, don't check it in, uh, would be would be my advice. And as I say, just be prepared that it might be a bit of an adventure getting to your destination. Uh, of course, you might get lucky as well. If you haven't booked travel, you're probably in for a bit of a rude awakening because of course the result of all of this, you know, Air Canada, of course, having canceled between 10, 15% of their flights across the board um, has meant that um, obviously the demand is there, supply has been cut, so obviously prices are going up and the uh, energy prices, oil, uh, obviously are having a major impact on that as well. So if you haven't booked travel already, be expect expect to pay a lot more than you would have uh, in, in months prior. When is all this going to sort out? Well, I my per personal prediction is that, uh, you know, it's the, the, the peak demand in summer, particularly this summer, that's caused the problem. I think as summer um, fades away into the early part of the fall, I think we'll see the situation ease. I think airlines are making these difficult calls in terms of cutting their capacity, um, airports as well. Uh, and uh, it's, it is a little bit chaos and, and you know, as some in industry insiders have told me, the worst may still yet um, be coming. 
And so that's why I say, you know, be cautious. But by this fall, I think things will start to unwind. Uh, that's not to say that fares are going to go down. They don't, they never come down as quickly as they go up. Um, but, um, I think that we'll start to see some improvement in the situation. And so I'm optimistic, uh, and, uh, uh, because I'm always optimistic and that's the only way to be if you're a traveler, as far as I'm concerned, but I just wanted to address it because it's, I think on the forefront of those of us, uh, on, on our minds for, for those who are, who are traveling certainly in the next couple of months. Uh, and, um, on that note, um, this week, you if you didn't catch us, we released the second part of our Sicily Liveaway Cefalu on the north coast of Sicily. We'll be headed in the end of March next year. Um, that is in conjunction with our other Liveaways in the Mediterranean uh, that are happening in the late winter and early spring. If you didn't catch it, the link to the recording is in the blog below. Coming up this week, I'm delighted that we are going to be going back to Norway, the fjords of Norway. This was a trip that was planned before the pandemic and, of course, we all know what's happened, uh, but I was able to secure a deal with uh, Hurtigruten, the ship, the company that runs the coastal steamer up and down the fjords of Norway, um, at a great deal. N after next year, the prices are going to be going uh, kind of crazy. So if you haven't done the fjords of Norway, please join us next year in May. Uh, the webinar, as I say, this coming Thursday, July the 14th. So stay tuned for that. Again, the link in the blog below. Lots more on the horizon. Uh, and I will be coming back to you as well with the uh, results of the various surveys we've had for the last few weeks. Um, and so there are still links there. If you didn't get a chance to complete any of those surveys, uh, please do. And I'll let you know what our members said and what that's going to mean in terms of what we're planning at Wheel and Anchor. So on that note, uh, greetings from a beautiful sunny day here in Helsinki, Finland. I look forward to catching up with you next week where I will be in Tallinn, Estonia.